Hey, John Tai here, and welcome to the Self Publishing Summit. Got a great guest for you today. Uh, he's the host of the podcast Entrepreneur on Fire, which was awarded Best of iTunes in 2013. Entrepreneur on Fire features him interviewing today's most inspiring and successful entrepreneurs seven days a week. And it's gone on to become really a phenomenal success. It's getting around a million, I think it's over a million downloads a month now. Plus, he's also turned Entrepreneur on Fire into an incredible business. We'll touch on that. Uh, you know, I think he's generating uh, over $300,000 a month now, which is incredible. Uh, plus, he's the number one best selling author of the book Podcast Launch, which already has 384 custom reviews on Amazon with a 4.8 star average rating. And now both of those numbers are incredible if you know anything about Amazon. And uh, so really looking forward to getting into that. We're going to talk about, you know, Bill, the, the power of a podcast as a platform and also the book and how that ties in with the business and how he's been so successful with that. So without further ado, our guest today, John Lee Dumas. John, welcome to the Self-Publishing Summit. John, it is a pleasure to be here, my friend. It's always exciting to have a conversation with you, and I'm uh, prepared to ignite. Great stuff, and uh, and I should say that you know I have a podcast, uh, and it was through John and John's course that I learned so much of what I know about podcasting as well. So a thank you to John for that as well. So, so John, um, I think probably to kick things off, tell us a little bit about entrepreneur on fire you know what it is and why you started it so entrepreneur on fire in its essence is a seven day a week podcast where i interview today's most inspiring and successful entrepreneurs and really talk about their journey their failures their lessons learned from those failures aha moments how they took those ideas and turned them into success and of course, the lightning round with a bunch of golden nuggets for people to, to take and to really run with as well. And really the inspiration behind Entrepreneur on Fire came from an, a need that I had and a, and a void that I, I saw that needed to be filled, which was um, a seven day a week podcast because I was driving to work five days a week. I was hitting the gym and I was consuming podcasts that were out there at such a rapid rate. I was going through people's back catalogs because they had a once a week podcast, even two or three days a week wasn't enough for me. I wanted more and I was getting so much value out of the interview based podcast that was mm. really drilling into the journey of the actual guest entrepreneur talking about how they got to where they are, not just where they are right now. So in my mind, I kind of crafted what the perfect interview would be or what the perfect podcast would be with these interviews included. And I went and searched for it and it didn't exist. So I just decided at that time, which is back in 2012, uh, to take a cue from Gandhi and be the change that I want to see in the world. I was just that thinking was, of that quote, yeah. Were you really? <laughs> we're like, yeah, yeah, literally. I was, I was going to trot that out and you beat me to it. <laughs> oh, I love it. And I decided that was going to be it. So I invested heavily in myself, got a mentor, joined a mastermind. A couple of months later, launched the podcast, and mm -hmm. here we are talking today. We have over 925 episodes um, that are out there. Um, we've been awarded Best of iTunes 2013. Um, we're getting over a million listens per month and generating over a quarter million dollars in revenue every single month as well. So it's been a success on all fronts. It's been a crazy journey, and it's come off of back-breaking hard work, which I'm never yeah. afraid to admit to. Yeah. And uh, I just want to pick up on a couple of things you mentioned right off the bat, because, you know, these are things that have come up a number of times uh, within the summit. And I think they're important. You mentioned having a mentor and having a mastermind as well. So getting somebody who's kind of been down that road before you and can can point you in the right direction, and tell you what not to do as, as much as what to do. Uh, and also the mastermind, again, it's 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 getting insights and inspiration from people, getting support. I think it's really powerful stuff. And whether it's a podcast you're starting or whether you know it's a book you're writing, I think I think it can be very valuable for both of those things. Um, and uh, so, so you've had uh, you've had that tremendous success, obviously, with uh, with Entrepreneur on Fire. Very inspirational stuff. You're kind of podcasting royalty now. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, this is my uh, crown. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you have uh, obviously you have a lot of people that that that, that, that listen to the podcast. You've got a million listeners a month, and um, a lot of people who you have a course, Podcasters Paradise, which is kind of a community and a course which I've been through. You know, say that was an instrumental part of me learning how to podcast. And um, 
before we get into, you know, I want to talk about the book and I want to talk about the podcast as a platform, but before that, just touch on why a podcast, you know, what is it about podcasting and what is it about now? I mean, I know 2012 was when you started, but you know, why is now a good time to be starting a podcast? Yeah, so to really answer your question, why podcasting? And I know that um, you know this is a self-publishing summit, and we're going to be talking about my book that I wrote um, yeah. coming up here. We'll tie all this in, yeah. <laughs> Definitely going to be tying all this in. Um, but the really powerful thing um, for me, um, just to again continue to be fully transparent, is that I've never enjoyed writing. I've never really considered myself a writer. I've never liked the medium of writing. I've I've always loved to read books, and I read blog posts, and I consume writing on some levels. Mm. But I've always connected with the spoken word. I've always connected with visual and video. Like that's always been more of my thing. So I was really passionate about the medium of podcasting as I was consuming it as a consumer. And so that's why I chose podcasting. The answer to the specific why podcasting is it connected with me. I felt the intimacy of a voice inside my earbud, you know, like getting mm -hmm. to know Pat Flynn via his podcast before I ever met him in person. Like to me, that was such an amazing connection that sometimes, you know, words on page just they, they can't compare to. And that was, again, from my personal opinion and my experiences. So I was really that person that connected with the voice and with the spoken word. And so that's why podcasting really appealed to me. Plus, just like for publishers, how Amazon is this amazing platform. Podcasting has iTunes, has mm. Stitch Radio, has SoundCloud, and now has Spotify, which is just unbelievable massive directories where hundreds of millions of people are going to these directories every single day looking for content. And if you have a podcast, you can be found for those keywords that you want to rank for. And it all made sense to me. Um, and mm. again, I knew that I had on some levels a gift for Gab, but I also knew that that was going to have to be worked upon because... I was not a natural interviewer. I was not a natural podcast host. I never had any commu uh, communications training in college or any of the sort. So for me, it was truly um, a process where I was bad when I started. You know, like I know a lot of authors, you know, their first book goes in the trash can because it's just like, it's like, <laughs> wow, that was a good try. But and I learned a lot there, but that's not ready for the public eye. I mean, that's what I feel like about my first 50 episodes, which I published and I got them out there. And I, it was critical because I got great feedback. But man, I was not a good podcast host to start. But I iterated, you know, over yeah. 900 now and 50 recorded episodes, you mm -hmm. know, like 915 of which are live now. I've gotten a little bit better each time, you know, which is why I love going back to that Stephen King wrote, uh, quotes, writers write. Like if you want to actually become a writer, you need to write. If you want to become a podcaster, guess what? You have to podcast. You have to be yeah. willing to be bad to get good. So that was my why podcasting. Yeah. And again, I think another big takeaway there is, you know, the, the idea of iterating and and taking action and, uh, you know, being prepared. Excuse me. Sorry about the squeaky chair. Being prepared to, uh, you know, do something that's 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 not great. And I remember, you know, like, you know, I've, I've written a lot of words. I've written over a million words in the last uh, 20 years and you get better with time and it's still not perfect and by any means and, and the, the podcasting, you know, I listened to some of those early, early interviews and um, oh, that's, that's horrible. And we're our own worst critics. And I think it's, it's again, if you're a creator, an artist, whether again, whether it's podcasting, whether it's books, whether it's both, be aware that you are your own worst critic. Get the feedback. Iterate. Just, just do it. Just overcome that fear. I think it's a huge, huge uh, lesson for everybody. Yeah. And John, podcasting one hundred and one, brother. I mean, I, I thought I trained you better. Step one: don't have a squeaky chair. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Um, we just, I mean, just, just touched on this uh, earlier on, but. Um, give us a little bit, uh, just give us some of the numbers again about, uh, you know, the success of the party. So you, we, we, you said you have a million listeners a month. You've got like two, I think I was checking your numbers cause you, you publish a report each month. And so you've been getting over $300,000 a month this year, the first three months of this year, I could see. So, uh, and, and what else has it done for you? Cause we you know we'll, this will segue into that platform building, which is critical if you're going to be an author, but you know, what sort of doors is it open for you? What sort of opportunities is it created for you? 
So Entrepreneur on Fire, we're currently generating over a million listens per month. I think we've done to date um, over 16 million listens mm -hmm. total. So we've really seen this ramp up. It's been a slow but mm -hmm. steady gro growth as the podcast has gained notoriety, subscribers, listeners. Um, and it hasn't just been this like flat hockey stick, which has been really cool to see that in the podcasting medium, you can really look for steady, slow, but consistent growth. So mm -hmm. that's been huge for us to kind of reach that recent milestone of, of generating over a million listens per month. So that was, that's been really cool. And we're looking to continue to see that growth happen month to month as well. And as far as the income, like I'm a huge believer in transparency and I've mentioned Pat Flynn once before already, but when I first was looking to getting into the online entrepreneurship, I was definitely wary of it. You know, I thought that it was probably a scammy place where, you know, I, I didn't know if I could really trust um, the people that were behind it and if they were just kind of in there as like slick oil, you know, snake oil salesmen. But then I stumbled across Pat Flynn and I saw the income that he was publishing and how transparent and just accessible and how nice of a guy he seemed. I was like, man, nice guys can do some cool things in this industry. Mm. And that's like what I wanted to be was also a nice guy. Mm. And so mm. I made a pledge to myself because of the inspiration that I got from Pat Flynn's income reports that if and when I got to the point where I was generating significant revenue, um, I, I would want to share that to potentially inspire others. So for me, you know, that happened about a year in, um, we had our first $100,000 a month in revenue. And, you know, I turned to Kate and I said, okay, you know, now it's time. Like, let's produce an income report to show people in the podcasting sphere, what's working and why it's working so they can emulate the success. What's not working? What's what, what we're failing and flopping at on a month to month basis so they can avoid those failures. And those all went into the income reports, which we've now been publishing for like 16 or 17 months. Um, and we've you know seen some ups and some downs. Like we had uh, 433K was our income for February. But then in March, um, it was like 232K. So not complaining about that number by any stretch, but <laughs> you know we're, we're seeing definite fluctuations in that. And I want to share with my audience why we're having you know, such a great month, you know, such, a, such a high month and then not such mm. a high month and what that looks like and, and why that's okay. So we're really transparent about that. I really like that about our business. Um, and you know, it's not for everybody and I get that. Um, but we really think it's, it's a good part of the EO fire brands. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you mentioned, you mentioned a couple of things, which I think tie will tie in with what we're going to talk about next, which is podcast as a platform building tool. You mentioned the intimacy of podcasting. You're actually in somebody's ear, you know, potentially for several hours a week, depending on how many shows you have. And also, you know, the authenticity and the fact that, you know, nice guys, nice girls can win. Uh, by being authentic and, and standing out from the crowd and, and uh, you know, the snake oil salesman and, and that kind of stuff. So I think those things are, are really important. So let's, let's move on to that platform building because I think, you know, whether it's a podcast and you're using that as a, a way to, whether you're um, selling advertising slots, whether you're selling backend products and services, or whether you're using a podcast to generate a platform to sell your books and, and build a following that way, um, you know, talk about the power of podcasts to build a platform and maybe give us a couple of best practices to, you know, build that community. Because something you've been really successful doing is building a sense of community around your podcast. So great to touch on that. And also, you know, building that email list, which I think is absolutely for any kind of online business is critical. Absolutely. So what I love about podcasting is, is it really is a sense of community. I mean, your listeners, they're listening to you, your voice, they're hearing it. They know that other people are listening as well and resonating with that same message. So that's why I really love the fact that, you know, I went right away to really naming my community, you know, something that I thought was really cool, which is Fire Nation. So I always address Fire Nation, you know, here we have her right here. I mean, I talk to them. That's who I'm talking to on yeah. my podcast when I'm not addressing my guests let me, specifically. Let me jump in here, John. And uh, so I'm, I'm, I thought I'd fly the flag for him <laughs> since, uh, since he's a, a guest today. So I got my Fire Nation Elite uh, uh, gift mug, which I was very grateful to get. So uh, <laughs> there it <laughs> is. And that's the so sense of yeah. community that's so important to foster as entrepreneurs, for sure. So that's why, you know, I'm really big on the the fire nation and talking to my audience when I'm not addressing my guests and, and really always encouraging them to engage, to email me, to come visit the site eofire.com. You know, that's a call to action. 
every single episode that I do for the show notes page. And then on that, on that show notes page, there's opportunities for people to opt into our email list, to our newsletter, X, Y, Z. So it is really important to me that I am giving my um, guests uh, and listeners a big opportunity to join the overarching community. And you've mentioned the newsletter. And that is really important because that's something that you own. When people opt in to your newsletter, you know, they're raising their hand. They say that, you know, I want more content from you on a weekly, maybe a couple times a week basis. And, you know, now that we've been able to build, you know, we have multiple email lists, but really our main um, Entrepreneur on Fire email list is now over 25,000. And that's the list that I can email out to on a week to week yeah. basis. I'm sorry, John, did you that. say 25,000? Because you broke up a little bit there. Yes, 25,000. Cool. And that's, a, and that's an email list that I can reach out to on a week week to week basis and share with them the latest of what's going on, offers or opportunities, joint ventures that I'm partnering with other people on. I, you know, I just did one on Monday. I woke up Monday morning and I was just kind of hanging out. I was like, I kind of have some free time. I was like, maybe I'll just do a webinar tonight and just have it open. And I just emailed my list and said, hey, I'm just going to I'm just gonna have an open uh, webinar tonight. Anybody that wants to show up can. I'm going to actually do my presentation on the five zones that you know I've just presented at Icon and Social Media Marketing World, which are two entrepreneurial conferences. But I said, I'm just going to do it for free. So if anybody wants to jump on to do it, let's have this happen. And you know, over 600 people signed up for that, for that webinar from that one email. 200 people showed up. And it was just a fun hour that I just spent. I flipped on Google Hangouts and it was, it was a great time and we had a blast. And there was a lot of people that learned some cool stuff that wanted to hang out. I mean, we had people from Colombia, Buenos Aires, um, Barcelona, Poland, and then of course the States and England and Australia. I mean, it was just crazy to yeah. see the international flavor of it. Um, but that's what happens when you built a community and you own that email list. You can reach out to people. Yeah, and that's very powerful, you know, just to be able to, to sort of spontaneously say, oh, I'm going to send out an email, 600 people register, 200 people show, and we know that, you know, that's a pretty typical for a for a webinar. Very um, typical. It's it's 30 percentage, like this weird number of yeah. registrants to show up, which is so strange, but it's so true. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, yeah, I guess life gets in the way and it's, it's understandable, but the fact that you can just put 200 people on well, a webinar. Let me, put something, let me put something out there as well, is that a lot of people, and you just have to realize this, sign up knowing they can't show up, but that mm -hmm. you're going to be offering a replay to people that do sign up. So we mm -hmm. always have people that are like, Hey, you know, I, you know, I can't make it, but I'm looking forward to the replay link. And then, you know, we send yeah. that replay link out and they consume it when they can. Yeah. And I am very often one of those people because a lot of a lot of the webinars are based in the states you know we're eight time zones apart i'm here in the uk so sometimes like there'll be a webinar and it'll be starting at one o'clock in the morning and uh, mm -hmm. i don't want to be up at one o'clock <laughs> and then try to be functioning the next day so i'll have to catch the replay so yeah um that all ties in so uh before we get on to the book i just want to ask you about building the list um because i know that on uh, your site you've just revamped the site and, and uh, so it's a really nice looking site now so it's, people should check Thank it out you. just for that reason alone um just to see what your best practices are but you know, you've got a number of different ways of getting people into your funnel chat to us about that a little bit well i mean hey we're on a google hangout you know maybe we just uh you know, take advantage that we are actually on a Google Hangout and do a little uh, a little screen share here. I mean, this could be something pretty cool. We're actually showing people, you know, yeah, exactly okay. the, so strat the strategy now, that I use. Can you, as, a, as a presenter, can you, yeah, you can. That was my question. Can you show it? <laughs> yeah. So as long as you have um, it selected on my screen, people should be on my website now and they can kind yeah, of see, I can see that. You know what we have going on here so like one of the big things that i focus on at the top is you know a start and our resources but then you know we have our our monthly income reports you know very very highly highlighted right here because it's a big interest for people but boom newsletter right there so there's a newsletter option right in the nav bar that people can just join our newsletter right away you know we have a feature box right here where right, right now we're featuring the free podcast course but we do often change it up so if people want to join the free podcast course, they can do so here. And then we have, you know, even down on the sidebar, you know, 11 habits of the most inspiring and successful entrepreneurs and boom, you know, send me the PDF right there. So there's a lot of opportunities for people to join our newsletter list. And even if you go into, you know, say one of our um, actual show notes pages here, and you go to the bottom of that page, you're going to see another opportunity for people to log in right here and enter their, their URL or their, sorry, their email and get connected with that. So, 
I really like to have a lot of different touch points. Uh, to me, that's you know a really cool way uh, to grow that email list in a powerful way, and it's something that we definitely focus on. Yeah, and uh, you know, I would second that. I mean, I. Uh, I interviewed Tim Page, you know, from from Lead Pages, and added, you know, those those automatic pop ups that come up after, you know, yeah, the lead boxes they're called, they're lead boxes. Um, and I'd resisted that for a long time because you know people find them irritating. But Tim made the crucial point, which is that you know if you don't make, give, you know, by doing that you force people to make a decision. Some of them will decide to opt in, some of them won't. Um, my uh, my opt in rates have have gone up, up massively as a result of putting those in. So, Good for you. Yeah, great. So thanks for showing us the, the website, John. So let's um well, just... and, not, and not to get off, off off point here at all, but I mean I think this is actually a, a pretty valuable uh, tool as well. I can get I can do this pretty quick is you know, I'll do a little another quick little screen share here. And this is actually what happens when you when you go to my site for the first time. This is what's called a welcome page or a welcome gate, I should say, where mm. if if you've ha never been to EO Fire before, this is the first thing that you see. Now you can skip and continue to cite if you want to, or you can click on this X over here, and it'll just drop down into the site real quick. So it's cool and it's not that annoying. And it only happens the first time you go there because you get cookied. And then um, you know if you are returning for a second or third time, you know we know that the the page knows that, so you won't be presented with that welcome gate every time. But that's really increased conversions and opt-ins quite a bit as well. Yeah, well that's good and uh, good to know that. So. Let's talk about the book now. So you you have this book podcast launch. We touched on some of the numbers: three hundred eighty four reviews, a four point eight star average. Uh, we we ch we checked out some numbers before we came on air, and it's still selling really well. It's consistently ranking, you know, at the top of its category. So uh, tell us about that, and and how do the two things tie in? How does the did the podcast help the book, and how does the book help the podcast? Yeah, so my podcast, Entrepreneur on Fire, was off to a pretty rip roaring start back in two thousand twelve. Uh, it was the only seven day a week podcast interviewing entrepreneurs. So I got a lot of buzz and I built up a pretty good size audience pretty quickly. Um, then I spoke at a conference on podcasting just a couple months later, New Media Expo in Vegas, which added a lot to my credibility and authority. But then like it was February and I was saying, you know, I'm getting a lot of questions about how I put this all together and how I actually mm. made this happen because other people want to leverage this medium as well. And that just kind of gave me the idea that, hey, like, Amazon, just like an iTunes, is an amazing directory of people that are going and searching for content every single day. I typed in the word podcast, and there's just a couple of janky books that you know had been written back in 2008, <laughs> 10, or 12. They just, they are, or sorry, that time, like 2008 or 2010, there didn't seem to be any current books on podcasting that were of any merits. And so I said, hey, I'm not looking to write a novel, but I can sit down and pretty much over a weekend crush out a book that tells my journey, that gives some incredible invaluable step-by-step -step guides to how to podcast, how to create, how to launch, how to grow your audience, how to monetize that audience. And I even created 15 video tutorials that go with this book, which I think is one of the big reasons why it has so many five-star reviews. I mean, you can see even some of the biggest books out there, and you know this, John, mm -hmm. I mean, famous books with authors have like 30, 40 reviews. I mean, it's not easy to get reviews on Amazon because that just takes effort, and a lot of people don't have to put effort in. So. It's been a big accomplishment to now, you know, be closing in on 400 reviews for my book podcast launch. But I did. I went above and beyond. I created 15 video tutorials um, that come with the book as well. So, you know, when people are reading the book, I have a, a link um, at the bottom of each page. It just says po uh, podcastlaunchvideos.com, and if people go mm -hmm. there, it takes it redirects to my website, um, eofire.com/slash podcast launch videos and it has all the 15 video tutorials there so it provides them incredible value it gets them to my website where they can potentially opt in or find out other things about me they can become on my news list join my communities whatever that might be and it's providing them with so much value that they're like man i spent three dollars on this book or 99 cents on this book or seven dollars I, I like to adjust the price so it's not always the same but mm -hmm. you know whatever they spent they know the value is 10x that at least and and then I do have a little thing at the end that says, hey, uh, you know, there's 15 video tutorials, and there's actually a 16th, um, and and that one is for people that take the time to leave me a rating and review, and that's been a big prompter for a lot of people to go in and um, leave a rating and review, then email me and say, hey, John, here's a screenshot of my rating and review. Can I get the password to that 16th video tutorial? Now, this is actually a question I'll have for you because I think it's important, and I think you're more knowledgeable on this topic. Um, is that legal? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I mean, good question. So, uh, funnily enough, I've just, like I said, I just came off an interview with Hollis Carter, and uh, he was doing a strategy where uh, he was giving basically a, a bonus if people would would leave a review. And so right. he was getting a lot of reviews anyway, but he was getting a lot of reviews as a result of, of giving a, away this bonus. And strictly speaking, it's against Amazon's terms of service because uh, they want the reviews to be natural, which you can sort of you can understand. It's it's a filter for the customers, and uh, so you know he was he was telling this story about how he, Amazon said, "Look, guy Hollis, because he knows some of the people at Amazon. Says, Look, we're really sorry, but we're going to take we're going to have to take these reviews down." And uh, so you know, <laughs> and uh, he said this happened like just before he was about to do a big presentation on stage. Ooh talking about this strategy and how successful it had been. And uh, so it became it became a, a sort of a case study, a learning point. Um, so you do have to be, you know, you, yes, uh, you know, of course you want to incentivize people, encourage them, and have a call to action to get them to, to leave a review. Um, you know, typically I suggest to people that, you know, you put that call to action at the end of the book. The people that read to the end of the book are more likely to be the ones that are enjoying it. People who don't like the book are probably going to get that far. <laughs> um, but you do have to be careful about, you know, anything that could be perceived by Amazon as an incentive to get people to uh, come and leave a review. Good to know. Yeah. So, uh, and oh, so I had a question. Yeah, from because when you were talking about at the 15 videos, uh, you had the link in the book. Do peop are people able to, uh, do they have to opt in to get those videos or are you basically giving them comp just as a virtue of having bought the book? Yep, there's no requirements. I mean, there's definitely a strategy behind having the opt-in, but you know, for mm -hmm. me, it's like I like to, I wanted to advertise on the book cover that this comes with 15 video tutorials. I didn't want to say, you know, if you opt in to blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So, you know, I just don't want to have any stipulations. So I just know that my mm -hmm. site is a powerful enough site where if people want to opt in, they can and do. Yeah. And that is an, another interesting point because if you make people opt in, chances are, and I'm talking about your books per, uh, specifically, I'm just talking generally now. If you make people opt in, chances are you will get a higher opt-in rate, but yeah. your reviews are likely to suffer because you will always get the odd person who's like, who resents being made to opt-in and they will leave you a bad review as well. And I've seen this happen over and over again. So yeah. uh, I think, you know, you have a, a super, super high average, like there are few, if any, books that have uh, uh, that many reviews and still maintain a 4.8 average. So. I'm Thank sure you. that strategy you have of not making people opt in, of just giving massive value is a key part of that and why you've got such good reviews there. Yeah, I think it definitely helps and uh, for sure. And also the reality is this, I think people should just realize that an opt-in is only worth what it's worth. So you know, I prefer to have high quality opt-ins, people that actually mm. are choosing on their own accord. I'm not just trying to chalk you know, my, my opt-ins up with people who are just doing it to get this and they're gonna unsubscribe or, or just not be, an engaged opt-in or anyways, because the reality is you're paying for every single opt-in that you have in some way, shape or form. Um, and like, you know, for my Infusionsoft, I have to pay per, you know, how many con uh, contacts I have. And, you know, I have like right now a ceiling yeah. of 130,000, which I'm under, but when I go over 130,000, I'll have to bump up to the next level. So I really want quality opt-ins and quality contacts. And, and that's another really interesting point that I think a lot of people overlook. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think um, it is a it is an easy point to overlook, and so thank you for bringing that up. Because uh, yeah, a, a lot of people just see it as purely as a numbers game, and there's you know there is a tendency to do that, and uh, right. people are comparing lists. Who's got the biggest list, and, and all that <laughs> stuff? Uh, <laughs> I say, so, show um, me your unique opt-ins. I mean, sorry, show me your unique open rate. You know, I don't care if you have a yeah. hundred thousand people on your list. If your unique open rate is two percent then you really have less people on your list than I do because my unique open rate is like 27% at 25,000 yeah. people. And I'd much rather have that kind of engagement than the, than mm -hmm. the latter or prior. Yeah. And that brings up another really good point, which is, you know, track. I mean, you know, Infusionsoft is great for that, but other, uh, all the email platforms will allow you to track things like, uh, you know, open rates, but also click through rates, you know, you know, how many people are engaging, track that through, mm. that's, that's really critical. And if, it, and if it's dropping off or if it's very, very low, you know, think about what it is you need to do to change that. What do you need to do to 
give more value to people, to increase that engagement and build the relationships. And, you know, I would say this is true, whether you're driving people to your podcast, whether you're driving people to a product or service, ultimately, or whether you just want to have an engaged community to buy your next book when that comes out. Um, yeah. So, you know, tracking those metrics is, you know, it may not be the, you know, some people love doing that. Some people really doesn't do anything for them, but it's still, it's very important. Um, and uh, so next question, John, is uh, flipping things around, how has the book helped the podcast and the business? So what's really been important about the book, and if people go and check out Podcast Launch, I'm not even suggesting that they buy it. Um, I'll actually have a link uh, for your uh, people to, to get this completely for free um, as part of my gift. But if you just go and even just click the sample uh, portion of, you know, you can like look at the first 15% of the book. The mm. second page actually has this big uh, link that just says, hey, opt in to a completely free podcast course, freepodcastcourse.com. And so, you know, these are really targeted people. They're searching for books on podcasting. They find mine and maybe they don't even want to spend the money to buy the book and that's okay, but they can now <laughs> opt in for free even on that, just from that sample page, they see that they can go to freepodcastcourse.com and that image is clickable as well. And it takes into an opt-in page where now I'm able to get them and going through my free 15 day course on how to create, grow and monetize their own podcast. And that's been really huge because I've been able to track those conversions and see that about 25% of people that are buying my book um, are also opting in to this free podcast course, which we now have over 9,600 mm. email subscribers to freepodcastcourse.com because it's an email based course. You have to sign up via email. We deliver the course via email. Mm. So it's a really powerful method that we've we've really dialed in from a perspective of, hey, you want to book on podcasting? Here's a great compliment to that, which is a free course on podcasting. And that's another way that we're really getting very targeted emails from people who may want to be part of that. Yeah. And that's 25% uh, is a really, really good opt-in rate. Mm. And as you say, it's not just 25%, but it's 25% of people that are, are super highly targeted. And uh, again, something else that's come up, uh, and I don't know if this is your experience yet, but um, a couple of people mentioned how Amazon is gives them some of their very best traffic because the people, you know, yes, you know, you described how you people can actually opt in for free just through the the look inside feature, and I've had that with with my books where up to fifteen percent of the people opting in via the book have, have not actually bought the book, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is seems a little bit crazy, but uh, you know, it's it's good to have them on the list still. Yeah, I'd, I'd certainly I'd take an email over a book sale, any, <laughs> any, even if it's not quite, even if they're not quite as enthusiastic as somebody who actually put down the three dollars for the book. Oh, um, for sure, but. A lot of people, you know, Amazon's the biggest buyer search engine. You know, Google's the biggest search engine, but Amazon is the biggest buyer search engine. And you know, somebody buys your book, they've got skin in the game. They've they've really put their hand up and said, hey, yeah, this is something I'm interested in. And a number of people said, yeah, you know, this is is some of our very best traffic comes through Amazon. And uh, and of course, you know, we they've got hundreds of millions of customers, so there's a huge uh, audience to reach out to. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and uh, so um, you know, just you know, you have that, you describe the system. So people opt in for the, for the mini course, and then ultimately they go through that, get tremendous value. You'll offer them the, uh, you know, I guess podcast is paradise and things like that. Yeah. So it's and definitely yeah. a funnel, uh, where people yeah. sign into the course, they go through the 15 day course, which is a complete course. I mean, by the end of it, they've learned how to create, launch, grow, and monetize their podcast. Boom. It's a standalone course. But then of course there are going to be people in a certain percentage that want more. And so we do offer a direct funnel into podcasters paradise, which definitely works well. But then also that, that email list itself is critical. And about a month and a half ago, mm -hmm. We raised the price of Podcasters Paradise by, you know, just a hundred dollars, but we raised the price. So I emailed out just to the free podcast course list and I said, Hey guys, we're raising the price to paradise. We're going to do a $25 raise over the next four days, tonight at midnight, tomorrow at midnight, you know, Wednesday and Thursday at midnight. Um, and there's going to be a bonus every single day as well. It's going to be a diminishing bonus. You know, if you sign mm -hmm. up today, you're going to get a 10 minute call with me tomorrow an audio bumper from me. The next day, you'll get a, a Podcasters Paradise t-shirt. So we were very specific with the diminishing bonuses and really having that scarcity with a $25 raise as well as the bonus getting a little bit less awesome every day. And, you know, we were hoping, you know, the list at the time was maybe 7,000 people. 
you know, we were hoping that we were going to get maybe 30 or 40 sales from that. We ended up doing 136 sales in four days for over $150,000 in revenue. So that came from me creating a free course, which generated a ton of signups, a ton of people who now know, like, and trust me and who know that, Hey, like I want to take it to the next level in podcasting. And I can grab lifetime access into paradise now before the price goes up forever. And that was huge for them. So that was really cool to see that experiment. And it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, that, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I read the, the blog post about that last yeah. month and it's very impressive. I mean, you know, to get 130, 140 sales in, in four days is tremendous anyway, but to get, you know, uh, 130, 140 sales of a, you know, 1200 like, yeah, a twelve hundred dollar product. That's that's huge. Um, <laughs> so yeah, well done for that. Very impressive. And uh, you know, while we're on the book, and I know we've got to wrap up shortly, but any other th uh, things that you think are worth mentioning in terms of the benefits that have come from the book, either to you know sending people and getting them listening to the podcast, or building the back end business, building the email list, anything that we haven't covered here. So what I think is really critical is just a mindset that a lot of people need to adopt. And that's, you want to be where your potential customers, clients, readers, listeners are. You know, for me as a podcaster, I knew that some of my potential listeners were in Amazon. And I love your point about how Amazon is the biggest buyer's search engine out there. I mean, people that are in Amazon, guess what? They're logged into Amazon, their credit cards on the accounts and they are buying, um, they're there to buy. Like people don't go to Google to buy, they go to Google to search. People go to Amazon to buy stuff. So that's why it's so huge yeah. and such an amazing and, and great platform. So I wanted to be there, just like for authors. I think that if you are doing a great and you have some great things in the Amazon store and you have a good funnel in place, you know, why wouldn't you not also wanna be in a directory like iTunes, like Stitcher Radio, mm -hmm. like Spotify, that um, have your potential readers. And so you can really kind of think about how you can leverage the different mediums that are out there, like podcasting, like video and YouTube, and things like John has done very successfully to just add fuel to his own fire. So I think it's a really important to just think outside of just the Amazon and authorship box, you know, which is, I know, a big reason why you brought me on the show today to kind of show people another opportunity to, sh to spread their message, to share their voice, their brand, their vision with the world. And that's definitely podcasting. Mm. Yeah. And I think, you know, there's a lot of things uh, happening in the podcasting world that are, that are helping podcasting to grow. It's like a rising tide uh, mm. as well as, you know, so it's some really cool stuff going on. And so, yeah, definitely you're, that was a key part of why I wanted to have you on talk to people because you've had such tremendous success and it's a great story and you're getting great results and it's very inspirational stuff and i think you know as authors yeah you know, thinking a little bit outside the box and you know a great tie-in would be a part you know somebody was talking the other day about a strategy where this was for a fiction author but you could do the same thing for non-fiction where their podcast was like just five little five minute segments uh where they were reading the book so it's almost like an audio book but via podcast and uh, they were using that to generate the list so that when the, the book finally came out, they had a lot of hungry people who were really into the book. Um, and a podcast could tie in great with, with an audiobook product as well because it's the same medium. Somebody's going to listen to a podcast. Good chance they'll listen. Often people listen when they're doing at the gym or commuting. You touched on that at the beginning. Um, you know, those are the people that would also listen to an audio book because it's the same way of consuming content. So I think it's very exciting, you know, and I'm looking at the clock here. We don't have time to get into all the cool things that are happening with the <laughs> podcasting. Just trust me that uh, there's some really exciting stuff going on and now is a perfect time to do it. So let's segue from that, John, into, you know, how can people follow up with you? Find out, you know, obviously the podcast itself, but also check out if they want to get into Podcasters Paradise, get the mini course, that kind of stuff. Cool. Well, I first want to mention the gift that I have for um, your people today, which are, which is um, the number one ranked book in all of Amazon on podcasting, my book podcast launch. So if you go to eofire.com slash gift, um, that book's waiting for you. I just updated and revised it one month ago. So it is super up to date, has some cool benefits and bonuses in there for people um, that are looking to learn more about podcasting. So that's my gift to you. Um, also another free opportunity. Thank, yeah, my, my pleasure. And another free opportunity for people interested in podcasting is freepodcastcourse.com. 
And that's where, you know, I teach people how to create and grow their podcast for free in 15 days. Um, and for people that are just like, wow, like this is a pretty cool um, Google Hangout that John and John are doing. Um, I also have a free course on how to do this via webinars at thewebinarcourse.com, which is a 10 day completely free course on how to create and present webinars that convert. But of course, all the magic happens at eofire.com. That's where you can get links to these courses and just see our stuff and our products and services. So I really hope that uh, everybody enjoys. Thank you, John. And I want to recommend uh, all of those things. Obviously, I've gone and gone and dived in deep and done the, the podcast as <laughs> paradise. I've also done your webinar course as well. Um, but I think you know, great. There's a correlation, I think, between the the tremendous value that you give people f for free through the podcast, through um, you know the, the book as a gift, and through the courses and the the back end results that you're having with it. Your your business and the, and the amazing results you're having with that and so congratulations on on your ongoing success and a big thank you for coming on being part of the self-publishing summit giving us a slightly different perspective and, and talking about a new medium with us and um and yeah thank you for sharing such great content john it's been a pleasure man thank you take care john bye-bye <laughs>